In this example, we're going to take a look at how we can use jQuery's data function to cache some data locally and reduce the number of AJAX calls that we actually have to make. Now, it's important to emphasize that what I'm going to show here and the appropriateness of it, I guess I could say, really depends on the amount of data that you're going to be showing and working with. And I'll explain more about that as we move along here. So first off, I call into a customer service and we're just going to grab some customers and iterate through them and then update those customers in a table. So it's pretty basic. Let's go ahead and run it and you'll see some customers come up. And now what I'd like to do though is when you click on one of these, I'd like to load the orders. Now, if we had a lot of orders, I would definitely recommend just make another Ajax call, of course. But in this case, we're gonna assume that our orders are kind of a reasonable number per customer. And as we click, I don't wanna make another Ajax call. I wanna cache those orders locally and then display them here. Now I wanna reemphasize one more time, it really depends on the amount of data you have as to whether or not this is an appropriate type of thing for your app. But in this case, it's gonna work really well. What we can do now is for each row that's created, I can come in and I already have the customer and the customer has some orders. So let's go ahead and cache those orders using the jQuery data function. So to do that, we'll come in and say tr dot, and then we'll say data, and I'm gonna give it a key of orders. And then I'm gonna put on or into that the cust orders that are available. And what that'll do is now the tr, I kind of think of it as it piggybacks the orders anywhere that tr goes. Now the same would apply for a div or really anything that you might have in the DOM. So I find it a really convenient type of trick when I need to cache some data. And that way I don't have to have some array of variables up top in my JavaScript or do something that's a little more complex. Now what I'd like to do is when you click on this row, Let's go ahead and call into a function, and I'm just gonna make a separate one to keep it a little cleaner and easier to read. Let's call it show orders, since that's what it's gonna do. And we'll come down here and create it. So let's do show orders. Okay, now I have a little bit of code I'm gonna paste in here to save typing because it really does the same thing. Once we get the orders, I'm just gonna loop through those and create a new row, and we're gonna add it up into a separate table which is our orders table right here. All right, so we need to get the orders though. Well, that's really easy to do because this, once this particular function is clicked, will represent the row that was clicked. So we can simply do a jQuery wrapper around that and we can get to the data. So I'm gonna simply say this dot data and then we give it the key we added, orders. And now I'm able to grab that order data out and we could store it in this variable and then use it. And that's it. So we now have cached the order data right up here. And now later, somewhere else in the application, instead of having to make a separate AJAX call, then I can go ahead and just grab it directly and display it. And anytime I have a reasonable amount of data, I like to preload it up front, kind of a less chatty type of approach, a little more chunky, if you will. And then I'll use the data function to cache it and then get back to it. And by using this technique, you can really minimize the number of Ajax calls that you have to make. So let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so we have our customers. I'm gonna refresh just to make sure we got our latest code. And there we go. When we click, we're simply pulling it. Now you'll notice it's concatenating those in. So we can fix that really easy. Let's go ahead and say tbody.html and we'll just clear it out every time. And now it should be working like we'd want here. And there we go. So that's an example of when you have the data up front, take advantage of the jQuery data function to cache that on, in this case, the row. But like I said earlier, you could just as easily do this with a div as well. And that's an example of using the jQuery data function.